Hey guys and welcome back, Dev Spider here again. So as promised, here is the power tutorial and everything I've learned about power so far. So I've gone ahead and built a temporary house right here. We've got a test bench set up over here. But first we need a couple of ingredients and tools in order to even get started on power. Now like I said, this is the test house where we'll go over how it works. So you can hit the switch, your light will turn on. Each room has its own lights and its own light switch. So we can turn these on. I guess it would help if I turned off the flashlight so you could actually see the light. We'll come into here to the stairs. There's a switch right there. Here's where all the power is coming from for here. We can come up here, open this door. We can turn this light on. And then, of course, what would it be without having a craft room? So in here, we've got two lights linked. So as you can see over there, we'll just hit the switch again, turn that on. We've built a bedroom here. Again, another light switch. Everything's separate of itself. As you see, you don't see a bunch of lights going on and off all together because they're not linked. And then we, of course, that you had to run that cables and organize those, and we'll go over that at the end of the video. All right, so first things first, in order to build power, you're going to need the upgrade tool. So to get the upgrade tool, you're going to need one piece of iron, one stick. It's crafted on the workbench. So we'll come over here, hit craft, and we just made the tool. So if we look at our backpack, I've got two because we already built one. I just want to cover that for that really quick. We're also going to need screws so we can grab some copper. It's five pieces or five copper ingots if you want to craft one bulk recipe of screws to get 50 screws. So we'll just add one copper ingot to the anvil. It'll give us 10 screws. For the next recipe that we need to go over is going to be plastic. So we need to make plastic in order to make electrical parts. And that's going to be 15 oil cans and 25 bark chips. So we can just hold shift, drag that over, use our slider. So we can get to 25, 25, there we go. And 15 oil cans. So again, hold shift, drag it over, use the slider. You can click or slide it either way. Then we'll bulk craft that on the chemistry table. So just hold shift, right click. It'll move it all over to the table. Hit craft and we get five pieces of plastic. Really expensive. <laughs> All right, so continuing on with that, the next thing we need to make would be electrical parts. So for electrical parts, we're going to need one copper ingot, one piece of plastic. We'll just hold alt and we can do a right click and it will move one out of the stack. Then we're going to need one cobalt, which are the blue ingots. So we'll grab that. And then we'll have to use the advanced workbench, which is this one here. Let me turn the flashlight on just to make sure it's not too dark. So press E here, we can craft on it and we'll just click those over. So one copper, one cobalt, one piece of plastic, craft it, gives us electrical parts. There currently is no bulk recipe for those. You have to make those individually. So as you can see here, no bulk recipe for those. All right, the next thing to make, just a matter of making the wire, which is going to be five copper ingots. So we'll grab five of these. And this is the bulk recipe I'm going over now. So five copper, five pieces of plastic, which we currently have on us, five oil cans. So we'll just hold down the alt button and just do a right click, move one at a time. Those are five oil cans and then use the advanced workbench to craft that. We'll hold shift and right click, move it all over at once. Hit craft and that gives us five pieces of wire. So that's how you make all the base items you're going to need to get started with. From there, we can just review the other items. All right, so here we've got, oh, well, these are, see, so when you name, you can name these things and mine have already been named, but these are junction boxes. So if we go into the recipe book really quick, you can go to placeables, power, and you need the control panel. Before you build anything else, go ahead and build your control panel because everything's linked to that. That's going to be four iron, two copper, two cobalt, and eight screws. Then you're going to need the junction box, two iron, two copper, two cobalt, and six screws on that one. Then you'll need, well, you don't need electrical relays, but if you want to keep your wires nice and neat and up high and out of the way where they're not just running across the map, I'd advise building some of these. It's going to be one iron ingot, one copper ingot, two electrical parts and four screws. And then if you want to be able to toggle stuff on and off easily and remotely, you'll want to build the wall switch, which will be one iron ingot, two copper, or one iron ingot, one copper ingot, four screws. 
All right, so let's go over what we've got going on here. So as you can see here, we've built a bunch of the junction boxes. About uh, eight of those. We've built one. You just need one of these panels. That's all you need. So when you press E, you can go into it, and you'll see what's what's powering it. So we've got 24 solar panels. We have 143 turbines. And then the number of batteries that we have. So we currently have 23 batteries for a capacity of 1,000. So your power, as far as your solar panels, your batteries, and your wind turbines go, you do not need to connect those up. They don't need to be wired. You can just place them anywhere on the map. The power carries all the way across the map. And to show that we're currently down here at my test site, all of my power for solar panels are, are coming from right here at the village. And then everything else is coming from up here on the wind turbines. And it's all traveling down here. There's no copper between there. Right, so again, so as far as your junction boxes go, you can label those as you lay them out, or you can label them as, after you wire them up, or even once they're wired up, you can still relabel them. So you can see here we've got one labeled for the fridge, one for the kitchen light, one for the stair light, living room light, so on and so forth. And you can toggle those on and off here. So if you watch the screen, we'll hit the stair one, and it'll turn off this area. Okay, and then if we come over here, turn the flashlight off. So if we come over here and hit this switch, it'll turn it back on. So essentially what's going on with these wall switches is they're just turning the junction boxes on and off. So you can do that either from the control box or from the wall switch. You can't do it from the actual junction box itself. All right. So if you have your upgrade tool out though, which is what allows you to see the wires and which way the power is flowing, you can't access these items because it's made for deleting and removing wires. So if you're looking at these and you press, you do a right mouse button and click on it, right click it, you can delete all the cables. If you did that on the control panel, it would delete every cable touching it. So you'd have to go back and rerun all these cables. Um, the same thing works with your relays. You can right click on that. It'll delete the cables that are connected to it. And let me make sure I've got enough wire on it. We've got five pieces of wire. So I guess we can cover that here really quick. So if we do a right click, it says, do you want to delete your wires? We'll say confirm. And there it goes. So if you're doing a bunch of power stuff and you've got it all close together like this, make sure you save before you start doing this. All right. So then we need to reconnect everything. So to do that, you're going to face the relay, the junction box, control box, switch, whatever you want. Press E. You'll see that the black cable going around. Come back over here. You'll see the green cable, which means you can connect it. Press E again. Press E to grab it from that one and then E to here. And then we should be able to toggle that back on and off. And that's why we have separate ones. I've tr tried everything I could think of to try to use one junction box to control all the lights throughout the building, but it wouldn't work. So like I said, they're all separate circuits. Because in real life, you would be able to put a switch in between and that one switch would then run a cable from it to the light and that would toggle the light on and off, but I cannot get that to work. All right, so we're about to head outside. Let's go check out our test bench. But as you can see, all the cables have been hidden. So I put those boxes there just, or those relays, just to try to straighten my cables out a little bit better. And then that runs across the wall up here. And then comes down here to this switch. From that relay, it then goes up to the roof here. And then I walked it across the roof to there, then to the light. So that this switch can control our outside lights. All right, so let's head outside over here so we can go over the rest of it. All right, so this, I guess you can call this dock. <laughs> it is 55 foundations long. All right, so I was trying to test to see if there is a distance limitation on the wire pools. So each pole here, as you can see, is separately cabled. It's not daisy chained together. So if we hit this switch, all the lights on this entire left side will turn on. All the way down. And like I said, that's just one cable per light. So we can hit that switch. It'll toggle that off. It's front, like I said before, you have the control panel. Control panel can control as many junction boxes as you want. However, you can only control one junction box at a time per wall switch. All right, so then we've got this one cabled up separately. This one is to show how to daisy chain. All right, so if you want to run wire, that's what you need the upgrade tool for. So you can see the flow of current in the wires. Now, while the upgrade tool is out, you cannot interact with the control panels and stuff, except that I just added a cable. So you'll see that black line behind you. If there's something you can connect it to, you'll see it turn green like that. So we're going to go ahead and right-click to not mess with that. Now, if you're facing something, you can right-click to delete the cables off of it. We can go over that in a minute. 
So from here, as you can see, so we're going from the control panel to the junction box to a relay. We're using this relay one because I want the cables up high and neat, but I also want to be able to hit this switch. So then from there, we're going to look at that relay, press E so we can get a cable off of it. Come over here to this light but I don't want to connect it to the light. So you can see it's currently trying to connect to the light. So we're going to turn away from it and we're going to put it on the relay itself. Now you can run cables off the relay so you can have multiple devices off of one relay. So we're just going to press E again and then we'll connect that to the light and it powers it up. From there, if we want to, we can go from this relay. I like to hit this one to keep everything straight and then go from that one to here and then we'll power up this side. So we're daisy chaining. And then we can come back over here, turn off our upgrade tool, and we can hit our switch and we can turn those on and off. All right, guys, so here's the test bench that I used to test everything out with. As you can see here, we've got another control panel, more junction boxes. And I just want to cover a few things here. So if we get our upgrade tool out, again, you can see the cables where they're flowing to. Now, like I said, you can press E and you pull a cable to the junction box. And that's all you can do with your control panel. So you can see it's not picking up the switches, it's not picking up the relays, it's not picking up the lights. So if we power, if we threw that on this junction box, we can then throw that straight to the light. We can throw that straight to a switch, straight to a relay. And the same thing for any other devices that are powered. All right, so we'll right click, close that wire. Now then to delete cables, like I said, you just face whatever item it is, you right click. Do you want to delete the wires? Confirm, yes. All right, now then, the other thing is if you want to pull a wire off of this junction box and connect it to this junction box, you cannot do that. You have to have something a go between. So we can slap it onto that switch if we wanted to, and then we can toggle that to turn the lights on and off. No matter what I did, I could not break the chain. So we put it direct power off of this junction box to that light. However, and then we ran from the junction box to a relay, put a switch in, because you would think that would be a, a break, but unfortunately it controls both lights, so there's no way to break the circuit. So if you wanted to do it quick and easy, like I said, control panel, junction box, switch, and there's the light. Now if we want to label our boxes, we'll just go into the junction box here. You can label at the very top right here, so we have constant power. You can click into here, you can label your lamps, whatever you want to call them. You can label your wall switch here at the bottom, and then it'll tell you all the devices that are connected on the screen. And that, guys, in a nutshell, is how power works. So no distance limitation still. All you have to do now is add in a junction box, control box, and a wire. And you can get all your devices powered up. So if we wanted to look in here really quick, just to show you, I have powered the fridge up in our little mock-up kitchen. So if I jump up here and look behind here, you can go straight to the, the fridge, but I put the relay in just to get the cable straightened out and to neaten it up. So guys, I hope this video helps you out. I hope you get your houses looking nice, get your cable management in order. As you can see, everything here is nice and tight for the most part. Be sure as always to hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching.